Shalom Chabrim. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you're watching, well, should I say Israeli News Live or should I say Danoon Institute? It's going to be a kind of a combination of both this evening. And uh, first off, I just wanted to remind you guys this is uh, Tisha B'Av. It, is the, um, it was the anniversary today of the destruction of the, um, of the first and second temples. It happened actually on this date. There are literally tens of thousands of Orthodox uh, Jews as well as, well, all kind of Jewish people at the, excuse me, at the Kotel praying there um, and seeking God for the return of the third temple. And... Many other serious events have happened in Israel today. The Intifada is back and alive and well, as you might suspect in Israel. The terrorist and the terrorism uh, of the different organizations from both the Palestinian side and Hamas side. Uh, there was uh, a Palestinian that, that, that lost his mind today, you might say, took an excavator, overturned a bus, killed one 25-year-old uh, young man that was walking uh, down the st street or just on the other side of the bus there in Jerusalem. Um, as well, there was an attempt in a northern, uh, excuse me, in, on the north side of Jerusalem, there was an attempt by, by uh, terrorists to, to kill a Jewish family or Jewish children, I should say, Jewish children, but the family thwarted that. Uh, of course, they were claiming, the Palestinians were claiming that they had killed three of the children there. Um, but just very, very intense uh, events happening all around Israel. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out to you, uh, when we did the news just the other day, Sister Esther had sent me an email. Uh, in, in there, it was uh, Sergeant uh, First Class Shai Kushner. Where there was an article on Israel Today. Uh, we had actually mentioned Sh Sergeant Kushner. Kushner. Uh, I should know how to say the name easily. My uh, sister-in-law, uh, her, she is uh, Kushner. Kushner is actually how you say it. Uh, and the young man, the sergeant that was killed in the battle, was a Messianic Jew. Uh, it, it was spoken about him in Israel. Today we uh, have his picture and a caption here for you so you can see it. And, and what was kind of ironic, when I saw the picture of this young man, uh, of course, my heart goes out to every Jewish person that I see killed in battle, uh, wounded, whatever the case may be, because they're fighting for their homeland. But my heart really went out to this young man as I saw his picture there. And of course, to know that uh, my brother-in-law, that's uh, his last name as well. So no doubt, uh, distantly, probably related together. Um, I want to bring to your attention some scripture, though, uh, regarding the things that are happening in Israel. And actually, I uh, owe a gratitude to my wife and her studies in the Bible and God leading her in these scriptures. And she brought them to my attention just the other night. And uh, as I began to look at them, I was quite uh, impacted by these particular scriptures here. This is, it actually begins all the way back in Isaiah 29. Uh, goes on into Isaiah chapter 31, and let's just see here. I have actually, I have my, my own Bible out where I had marked some of these passages down that I wanted to share with you, um, and I'm just trying to look here. Yes, uh, but anyway, I think I'll use her Bible because the one she marked here. Um, one, the, the one in particular that I wanted to start with, and bringing this out to you, sorry, I got something on my lip there, um, is in Isaiah chapter 31, and uh, I believe she's using a King James Bible herself, and verse 4 says, For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as a lion, and the young lion roaring in his prey, when a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. As the birds fly, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it and passing over, he will perceive it. Now, Mount Zion is right there outside of the, the, Jerusalem, the, the, the gates there. Uh, and what's interesting, this is where King David's tomb is. This, that's, all of that area there is Mount Zion. 
Mount Moriah is where the Temple Mount sits. But Mount Zion, and actually the Mount Zion, if you think about it, going down, I guess, even to the Kotel where the Wailing Wall is, that's Mount Zion. Mount Moriah is where you go up and you're up on the Temple Mount and you got, it's like two different mountains there, right in there. But here we have, God says here, notice again, He says, For thus uh, hath the Lord spoken unto me, like as a lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. When a multitude of shepherds is calling forth against him, he will not be afraid of their voice. In other words, no matter how many rabbis that have gone there and they have cried unto God and in protest of the Vatican and the evils that are happening in Israel, the, the, the Vatican is like a roaring lion and a young lion, and he doesn't care how many shepherds come against him. Doesn't care. He could care less about what you're doing. So he says, uh, He will not be afraid of their voice, nor abase himself for the noise of them. So it doesn't matter how much they scream and shout, it's not going to move the Vatican one bit. Uh, so shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. See, the hill thereof is where the Temple Mount sits. So God himself has to come down. Even Israel, has, my, my own people, have not the audacity to stand up against the world and take back what God has given to us. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending, he will deliver it. And passing over it, he will preserve it. Now, uh, let me take you to chapter 31, verse 1. I want you to see here as well. I'm backing up just a little bit here. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. And in the horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. See? Yet he also is wise and will bring evil and, and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horse is flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fall, fail together. And then, of course, it goes right back into what we just read. God's got to do the fighting. Why? Because Israel's, Israel's not doing it. They're seeking everybody else to do this for them. Um, let me take you back a little further. Verse, uh, chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that prepare a plan, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion for his princes were at Zoan and his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of people that could not profit them nor be helped nor profit but a shame and also a reproach. Now, you might say, what is, we know that Egypt is trying to broker a ceasefire. This is not what he's talking about. Remember when God says in another place, I believe it's in Revelation there, where he talks about the two witnesses being killed in Revelation, I believe, chapter 11, uh, or chapter 7, forget which one, I think it's chapter 11 there. But he says that their bodies, their, their dead bodies would lay spiritually in Sodom and Egypt. And then it says where our Lord was crucified. Now, God is saying that part of Israel is Egypt. It's kind of odd. And he does that over in the book of Revelation. But what is he saying? And of course, Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of today is the Pope of Rome. I mean, granted, I mean, he is into sun god worship. 
He considers himself God on earth. Well, Pope Rome does, and so did Pharaoh. He considered himself God on earth. He was Ra. All the, the traditions of the Vatican come from the ancient Egyptian pagan ways. And so when God is saying to Israel, Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, that take counsel but not of me. Now this, this isn't everybody in Israel. This isn't, just, this isn't every rabbi either, but it is the, uh, there's many of the politicians that take counsel not of God, but as he says, that prepare a plan but not of my spirit. What is the plan? Your, your two-state solution? Is that, is that what your plan is? Your plan for peace? Your plan for a ceasefire? Give up some more of God's land? Do you think God is going to play games? I mean, I, I, granted, today I had the radio on in my car. And finally, there are some people that are standing up for Israel. And here in southern South, uh, South Florida, there is a... Uh, uh, a, a radio station called Fox News. And it's, it's based on the Fox News. Sean Hannity comes on there, and uh, they have a, a local guy, Drew Steele, who, uh, who's a commentator on there. And Drew, ironically, and, and it's funny because I actually got on his program the other day and had a chance to speak for a few minutes. And the very thing I wanted to say when they were on a break, they were going to come back on, and he was really kind. He let me speak a lot more than probably what he probably should have. But... Uh, but when I was going to come back on, the very thing that I intended to mention, as I turned on the radio today, Drew actually had the courage to stand in the face of any criticism and defend Israel against all those nations, the United Nations, uh, the EU, the United States, the Obama administration that is condemning Israel because of the death of 1,400 civilians in Gaza. And what he did is he mentioned the very thing that I was going to mention myself, Dresden being one of them. Now the other one I, I didn't even think about. I didn't even think about Japan. But he brings out Japan as well. And how that the president wanted, back during the, 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 the Second World War when they were fighting Japan, he wanted to bring the war to an end. So what did he do? He dropped an atomic bomb. Estimated 150,000 civilians were killed with one bomb. Because the President of the United States wanted to bring that war to an end, so he figured that if he attacked the civilian population of Japan, it would cause the Emperor to buckle and bow down. But the Emperor did not want to bow down disgracefully, but the President refused to accept anything but an unconditional surrender from the Japanese. And and now granted so, did the United States have a, you know, they, they were angry at the death of their soldiers and the people at Pearl Harbor. But when that wasn't enough, he dropped another bomb on Fukushima. An estimated 75,000 civilians, that's women, children, everything you could imagine died. Not to mention the people that died later from cancers and everything from radiation exposure from these two, two atomic bombs that were dropped. In Dresden, the United States and Great Britain bombed the city of Dresden, which was the capital of Germany, relentlessly with more than 39,000 pounds of explosives and they dropped all these bombs and they totally leveled an entire city. Didn't care if it was women, children, or nothing. Killed them all. I forget how, what the estimated death toll was there. I, I, I want to say 15,000, but I may be wrong on that. So the point is, these, the hypocrisy of the nations that are against Israel for what's happening in Gaza, and the thing is, the Israeli soldiers are trying their best not to kill the children. But Hamas just does not, they, you have to understand, you're dealing with a suicidal people. I, I, I've lived there. I know what I'm talking about. I, I, I've been through a, a suicide bombing. I know what it's like to be in Israel in the Antifada. And not only did I, did I go through a suicide bombing, but also, you know, it was day after day, suicide bombing, suicide bombing. And now they're going to start all over again. So if Israel does not make a stand and do something. Now, the sad thing is, clearly, from Scripture, 
my people are not going to do anything. We're not going to take God's counsel on what to do. God doesn't play games. You go back and look in your Bible. Christians, I encourage you as well, go back, read the Old Testament, and see the way God commanded the children of Israel. Spare not. Young and old, small, women and children, God said, destroy them all. And unfortunately, this is the reason this, we're in the situation. Now, now we live today in, in modern society, the humanitarian age is what I would call it. And God does. I mean, truly, the blood of Yeshua is remarkable in grace and mercy. And truly, there are many Muslim people that are coming to know Yeshua. And, but the sad thing is, is he has to come himself to them because you can't get the gospel hardly in there at all. Oh, they might say, well, the Catholic Church has gone in there and got it. They, 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 they're just, they don't get the Christ at all with the Catholic Church. I mean, face it. But the true ones that become saved is where Yeshua himself comes and visits the Arab people. And they get to know who he is. But God is so upset with the leaders of Israel. He says here, that they may add sin to sin. They walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. You know, the reason why he calls it the shadow of Egypt is because Egypt was foreshadowing Rome the way it would be in the latter days. This is why Moses says, in the song in, in Exodus 15, I will sing unto the Lord that I've gotten victory over the horse and over his rider. That spirit of Moses is about to come on the scene. And Mr. Pharaoh of today, you will go down. Where Israel has tried to diplomatically resolve everything contrary to God's way of doing it, God will resolve it, and he won't be playing church. One of the things I just wanted to mention to you to re or remind you guys is that uh, on Wednesday morning, we will actually be headed out to Houston, Texas, speaking over there with Brother John Kostick, and then on to North Carolina. And there was a little slight change in the North Carolina plans there. I know uh, Brother Austin, we speak there. Originally, we were set there for the 12th, so if that ends up being better for him, haven't confirmed that with him yet. We may keep it as the 12th. We were looking at moving his up one day and so we could go to Asheville, North Carolina. Brother Chuck, though, is doing better now. I thank God for that. But we have postponed doing a, a, a speaking engagement in Asheville to some time later. But if you're in Asheville, keep in mind, Franklin, North Carolina is only about an hour and 20 minutes away. If you'd like to meet us in Franklin, we can get you the details on that here as soon as we can, and then on into Indianapolis, Indiana. I'll be there on the 15th and 16th, speaking at a conference there. Check it out on our website, israelreturns.com. Also, keep us in prayer. We certainly need your prayers for travel and mercies during this time, and as well, we always could uh, use the, your help. We thank you, and, and God bless you for your financial support for this ministry, and that can be done as well on our website at israelreturns.com. God bless you, Baruch Hashem, and we hope to get to see you while we're out this time.